catch my breath as I go along here. Okay. Um, I have that, this lemon. You just give me a glass. Okay. Tonight's go show, which we won't get all the way through, and we're going to have to skip a week because of the holiday, and we'll finish it up when we come back week after next. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because I'm going to be out of country. Okay. Next. Next week. Next week. Um, the Go Show for tonight is The Workings of Brahma and Chakra. It's on page 798 of Volume 1. Okay? And let me start by asking. This is for me. Okay. Do you guys, do you guys have any, do you have any kind of a, a what's a, who's Brahma and Chakra? Do you have a relationship with Brahma and Chakra at all? Mm-hmm. Where do you see Brahma and Chakra? Huh? No? No? No. You chant the Brahma and Chakra every day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? Because they change the. No? It's a, another language. It's not the Japanese language. Uh, no, Brahma and Chakra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japanese language is Bonten and Tai Shaku. <laughs> Okay, in the middle row is Bonten Taishaku. Neaten is next to Bonten. Okay, Gaten is next to Neaten. And then Myojoten, who is the god of the stars, is all the way over on the other side of, side of Devadatta. So that's, you know, so when you're talking about Brahma and Chakra in Japanese, that's Bonten and Taishaku, as we already have on the Gohonzon right now. Okay? So. Clarifying that. Let me start by reading the background for the Go Show on page 801. And it says, This letter, the workings of Brahman Chakra, background. This letter, written at Minobu in 1277, is entitled The Workings of Brahman Chakra because it contains the passage, The time will certainly come when, by the workings of Brahman and Chakra and the other gods, and other gods, the entire Japanese nation will simultaneously take faith in the Lotus Sutra. In this letter, Nichiren Daishonin encourages the 19-year-old Nanjo Tokimitsu who succeeded his father as steward of Ueno Village in Fuji District of Suruga Province to maintain his faith. He also advises Tokimitsu on how to respond to those who attempt to threaten or deceive him into discarding his faith. For if they succeed in their attempt, the Daishonin warns, they will use him as a means for making many others abandon their faith. Okay, so... What's Nanjo Tokimutsu's story, right? Why is the Daishonin have a relationship with this 19-year-old young man? He's not even 19, actually. He's almost 19. Because his father? Yeah, okay. Mm. Because his father was a disciple of the Daishonin's, yeah. okay? Mm. And his oldest brother was a disciple of the Daishonin's as well. Oh, yeah. Mm. His older brother. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he has a younger brother who was also a disciple yeah, of the Dutch Chinese, but happened to yes. pass away. Uh, so, um, let's see, he's saying, okay, so the, the quote that this is coming from, the time will certainly come when by the workings of Brahma and Chakra and the other gods, that's actually ultimately from the uh, selection of time. Uh, but I'll read that later. Here we go, we go on page 798. I'm going to read the whole Go show. Mm. Okay, rather than read from, because they, they've taken some things out of volume four. Okay. So I'm going to read the whole Gosha right now. Ready? Okay. It says, I received the workings of Brahma and Chakra, page 798. I received on the 14th day of the fifth month the horse load of yams that you took the trouble to send me. Considering the labor involved in producing them, yams today are as precious as jewels or medicine. I will comply with the request you made in your letter. Once there was a man named Yin Chifu. He had only he had an only son whose name was Po Chi Yi. The father was wise, and so was the son. One would have thought that no one would try to estrange them, but Po Chi Yi's stepmother frequently slandered him to her husband. However, Chifu would not listen to her. Undaunted, she continued for several years to contrive a variety of plots against her stepson. In one such scheme, she put a bee into her bosom, rushed to Pochi'i, and had him remove the insect, making sure she did so so that her husband would observe the scene. 
pretty racy stuff. In an attempt to have her stepson killed, she then accused him of making advances to her. Okay? Now, he, he goes on, he, now he's going to go on to another story about King Bimbasara. But if you were to read all this stuff on these guys, like what happened to, to uh, Po Chi'i, his father, for the first time, began to act weird because that incident made him kind of question his son's behavior and it depressed his son so much that Po Chi'i left the family and went and drowned himself, killed himself. Oh. Okay, so happy story number one. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Then we go to the uh, two. <laughs> this is going to be a great go show. Mm -hmm. uh, a king named Bimbasara. Does anybody know who uh, Bimbasara is? <laughs> He's Ajishatru's dad. Okay, who's Ajishatru? Devadada's, Devadada's bro. Okay, okay, this is, I'll remind you. Bimbisara, okay, mm -hmm. a king named Bimbisara mm -hmm. was a worthy ruler and the greatest lay supporter of the Buddha within the entire land of Jambavipa. Mm -hmm. Everybody remembers that about mm -hmm. uh, Ajishatru's dad, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, moreover, he reigned over Magadha, the state where the Buddha intended to preach the Lotus Sutra. Since the king and the Buddha were thus united in mind, it seemed certain that the Lotus Sutra would be expounded in Magadha. A man named Devadatta wished to prevent this by any means possible, but all his attempts ended in failure. After much thought, he spent several years befriending King Bimbisara's son, Prince Ajashatru, and gradually obtained his confidence. Then he set out to estrange father and son. He deceived the prince into killing his own father, King Bimbisara. Now that Ajashatru, the new king, had become the, of the same mind as Devadatta, the two had banded together, and the two had banded together. Non-Buddhists and evil men from all five regions of India swarmed like clouds or mist gathering in Magda, Magadha. Ajashatru flattered them and won them over by giving them land and treasures. Thus the king of the state became an arch enemy of the Buddha, just the opposite of who his father had been. Everybody's with me? Seeing this, seeing this, the devil king of the sixth heaven of the world of desire descended with his innumerable followers to Magadha and possessed the bodies of Devadatta, Ajashatru, his six ministers and others. Therefore, although these people were human in appearance, they wielded the power of the devil king of the sixth heaven. They were more boisterous, frightful, and alarming than a high wind flattening the grasses and trees, a gale stirring up waves upon the, a sea, the sea, a great quake jolting the earth, or a huge fire devouring one house after another. A king named uh, Virudaka, incited by Ajashatru, put hundreds of Shakyamuni Buddha's clan, his, his actual relatives, right? to the sword, which would mean he killed them. King Ajashatru unleashed a herd of drunken elephants and let them trample to death countless disciples of the Buddha. He also had many other disciples killed by concealing his soldiers in ambush at the roadsides, defile, uh, defiling well water with excrement or persuading women to bring false charges against them. You know, they, they were constantly saying that this guy got me pregnant, mm -hmm. all right? Shariputra and Madhugayana were severely persecuted. Anybody know what point four there is going to say what happened to those two? They were, they were severely beaten and Madhugayana was beaten to death. And Kola Dalyin was buried in horse dung. He was actually murdered. His head was buried in horse dung. The Buddha was forced to survive for 90 days, one whole summer on horse fodder. So we say, what, what is his point in bringing all of this out? The suffering? What about the suffering? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would all probably be considered <laughs> suffering. <laughs> to throw a dart at the wall and probably hit it, yeah. But I mean, what is the point that he's trying to make? These are all people that had relationships with the Buddha. These are all people that supported the Buddha, and yet they still had this kind of oh, adversity. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay? So what he's really saying is those of you that support me now that meet adversity, please understand <laughs> this is exactly the way it was for the Buddha's followers in his lifetime as well. Okay? Okay, so he says, he says, people thought that perhaps not even the Buddha's power could match that of those evil persons. Okay? Even those who believed in him swallowed their words and said nothing and closed their eyes so they may not see. They could only wave their hands helplessly, speechless with dismay. In other words, they basically don't say anything to get in anything in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay? Finally, David Dada mm -hmm. beat to death. Yeah. You didn't know that? Mm -hmm. He beat his, 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 her, his, uh, her foster, uh, Shakyamuni's foster mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. Finally, David ought to beat to death the thus come one Shakyamuni's foster mother, the nun Uttpalavarna. Again, no relation, not a blood relative, but had been actually his nan, <laughs> and caused the Buddha's body to bleed. We know when he rolled the big boulder down and it hit his toe. Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's saying, you know, uh, David Dodd is pulling all this nasty stuff. Under these circumstances, there was no one who would side with the Buddha because it didn't look like it was going to go his way, right? Mm -hmm. And why is the Daishonin talking about this now? Warning, don't, don't look at now in this moment and think that I've been defeated, mm -hmm. all right? Because Shakyamuni went through these same kinds of things that I'm going through now. You just, they're not as emphasized. You don't remember those in the actual sutras. All right? And yet, somehow, continuing on page 799, first column, and yet, somehow, despite all these many persecutions, the Buddha at length managed to preach the Lotus Sutra. He did win, just by not giving up. A passage from this sutra states, since hatred and jealousy toward this sutra abound even when the thus come one is in the world, how much more will this be so after his passing? This passage means that even while the Buddha was alive, the enemies of the Lotus Sutra offered fierce opposition. All the more will they harass those who in the latter age preach and believe in a single character or even a single brushstroke in the Lotus Sutra. In light of this passage, it would seem that no one during the more than 2,220 years since the Buddha expounded the Lotus Sutra has lived it as the Buddha himself did. Only one, the Daishonin qualifies here, mm -hmm. only one who has met with great persecution can be said to have mastered the Lotus Sutra. Why is that? Because of the three powerful enemies only becoming manifest by virtue of those people that are actually on the verge of attaining Buddhahood. And the only way to actually attain Buddhahood in your present form is through the Lotus Sutra, mm -hmm. which in the latter day of the law is Nomyo, embraced as Nam Myoho Rengekyo, right? So he says, only one who has met with great persecution can be said to have mastered the Lotus Sutra. You've been able to defeat the three powerful enemies, whether they were kings trying to kill you or keeping your job. It's the 21st century. We don't have the same kinds of issues, but we have the same kinds of difficulties, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The great teachers, Tantai and Dingyo, would appear to have been votaries of the Lotus Sutra, but they did not meet persecutions as severe as the Buddha did in his lifetime. They encountered only minor opposition. Tintai from the three schools of the south and the seven schools of the north and Dingyo from the seven major temples of Nara. Neither of them was persecuted by the ruler or of the state, attacked by sword-brandishing multitudes, or abused by the entire nation. According to the Lotus Sutra, those who believe in the Lotus Sutra after the Buddha's passing will suffer obstacles more terrible than those of the Buddha. Yet, neither Tintai nor Dengyo met opposition as harsh as what the Buddha did, let alone persecutions that were greater or more numerous. When a tiger roars, gales blow. When a dragon intones, clouds gather, mm -hmm. yet a hare's squeak or a donkey's bray cause neither winds nor clouds to arise. As long as the foolish read the Lotus Sutra and the worthy lecture on it, 
the country will remain quiet and undisturbed. As long as the foolish read the Lotus Sutra and the worthy lecture on it, the country will remain quiet and undisturbed. But it is stated that when a sage emerges, so this would be to have discussed the Lotus Sutra prior to Nitran's advent, would have been a much more difficult or a much more simple task than after. He says, but it is stated that when a sage emerges, he's speaking of himself, and preaches the Lotus Sutra exactly as the Buddha did, as he's just now qualified, neither Dengyo nor uh, uh, Tantai had, okay, because they didn't meet the opposition that goes along with that, the nation will be thrown into an uproar, which is what's happening now in Japan, as he's writing this, and persecutions greater than those during the Buddha's lifetime will arise. Now, I am not a worthy let alone a sage. I am the most perverse person in the world. However, my actions seem to be in exact accord with what the sutra teaches. Therefore, whenever I meet great difficulties, I am more delighted than if my deceased parents had returned to life or, the, or than one who sees the person one hates meet with some mishap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am overjoyed that I, a foolish man, should be regarded as a sage by the Buddha. Suppose there are wise persons who strictly observe the precepts, the 250 precepts, and are revered by the entire nation more than the Lord Shakra is by all heavenly beings. Suppose that. Yet, what if in the eyes of Shakyamuni Buddha and the Lotus Sutra, they are as sinister as Devadatta? They may appear respectworthy now, mm. But what horrors await them in their next life? If rumors spread that you appear to be a votary of the Lotus Sutra, both those who are close to you and those who are not will unexpected, unexpectedly admonish you as if you, were, uh, if, as if you were your true friend saying, as if they were your true friend saying, if you believe in the priest Nitrin, you will surely be misled. You will be in... Uh, you will also be in disfavor with your Lord. Then because the plots that people devise are fearsome, even to worthy persons, you will certainly abandon your faith in the Lotus Sutra. So it is advisable that you do not carelessly let it be known that you are a believer. Now he's telling this to 18 going on 19 year old Nanjo Tokimitsu, right? Earthquake. Just now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Stop. I thought that was just my life condition. <laughs> <laughs> so the earth shook and it wasn't me? No. Okay. All right. He's <laughs> so it is advisable that you not carelessly let it be known that you are a believer. So the Daishonin says himself to Nanjo Tokimitsu, don't go about trying to attract problems and attract persecution. It's not necessary for you to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's saying, uh, those possessed by a great devil, pardon me, so it is advisable that you do not carelessly let it be known that you are a believer. Those possessed by a great devil will, once they succeed in persuading a believer to recant, to recant use that person as a means for making many others abandon their faith. Shobo, Notobo, and the lay nun of Nagoe were once Nietzsche's disciples. Greedy, cowardly, and foolish, they nonetheless pass themselves off as wise persons. When persecutions befell me, they took advantage of those to convince many of my followers to drop out. If you allow yourself to be so persuaded, those in Suruga who seem to believe in the Lotus Sutra as well as others who are about to take faith in it will all discard the Lotus Sutra without exception. So he's saying, basically, you may only see yourself as an 18 or 19-year-old kid, and you know your dad had devout faith, and you know that your mother has devout faith. But the bottom line is, if you allow yourself to be affected by the things that I'm warning you about, it will not just be you that you're affecting. You'll be affecting many, many more people than yourself. So please understand that that responsibility in your actions will follow you. It won't be just you that you're making a cause about. Affecting others is a wider slander of the sutra than just something that has to do with you. All right? Because you're the leader of a little town. 
You're the Lord of Ueno. Okay, you're only 19 years old, but you're a leader of society already. Mm -hmm. He says, if you allow yourself to be so persuaded, those in Suruga, where you're in charge of, who seem to believe in the Lotus Sutra, once they see you change and get flaky on your belief, they will immediately become flaky on theirs as well. Mm -hmm. As, okay, and all those that might take faith in it will also never get that opportunity because you've, you abandoning your faith will have eliminated the platform for them to find out about it. Because don't forget, he's speaking to him now, but Tatsunakuchi is, or, or pardon me, um, uh, Asahara persecution is still ahead. This is all preceding all of that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. he's saying, uh, take care, uh, uh, we'll discard uh, the sutra without exception. There are a few in this province of Kai who have expressed their desire to take faith. Uh, yet, it, yet I make it a rule not to permit them to join us unless they remain steadfast in their resolve. Some people, despite their shallow understanding, pretend staunch faith. Boy, we all know that, right? That's true even today. And speak contemptuously to their fellow believers, thus often disrupting the faith of others. They on shih tzu other people, okay, even though they say they have correct faith. Mm -hmm. But by virtue of doing that on shih tzu, they just qualify. They don't have correct faith. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. He says, and so the, what's that I shown and say you should do to those kinds of people? Does he say remonstrate with them or whatever to non Jotoki Mitsu? He says, leave such people strictly alone. <laughs> okay? Don't even go there. They're such slanderers, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. The time will certainly come when it will be appropriate. But you don't have to decide to go do that yourself. Mm -hmm. All right? The time mm -hmm. will certainly come when, by the workings of Brahma and Chakra and the other gods, the entire Japanese nation will simultaneously take faith in the Lotus Sutra. At that time, I am convinced many people will insist that they too have believed since the very beginning. If your faith is firm, then you should single-mindedly resolve, I maintain faith not for the sake of other people, but for the benefit of my deceased father. Okay, so why is he saying that? <clears throat> To encourage him. Pardon me? No, actually, this is, he's basically, the Daishonin is giving him guidance yeah. on how to cover his butt about what he's doing and still not renouncing his faith in the Daishonin's teaching. Mm -hmm. What he's saying, here's your answer when people challenge you on that. Mm -hmm. If your faith is firm, he's saying to Nanjo, if your faith is firm, then you should single-mindedly resolve that I maintain faith not for the sake of other people, but for the benefit of my deceased father. I continue with the belief in Nam Yohoren Gekyo that my father had, that I was born into the family of, that my older brother had, that my mother has, mm -hmm. that I've had the great good fortune of meeting this, the, the priest Nichiren to know. Mm -hmm. He goes, others will not perform, and, and then tell other people, mm -hmm. others will not perform memorial services for him because he was a, he was, a, he was a disciple of Nichiren, right? Mm -hmm. So it's left upon me as the only, as the eldest surviving son, I've got to be, this is part of Japanese culture, right? Mm -hmm. So that I've shown is giving him a way to get out of any kind of a stickiness mm -hmm. over the decision, okay? Others will not perform memorial services for him, my dad. Mm -hmm. okay. Because I am his son, I am the one who must pray for his repose. I govern one village. I will spend one half of my revenue making offerings for the sake of my deceased father and use the other half to feed my wife, children, and clansmen. Should an emergency arise, I will give my life for my Lord. Speak in a mild manner, no matter what circumstances. That's that I've shown his uh, advice to him. Mm -hmm. He continues, if people should try to weaken your belief in the Lotus Sutra, mm -hmm. consider that your faith is being tested. Tell them sardonically. What does sardonically mean? <clears throat> With a little bit of attitude. 
a little bit of kind of like, I think you got this backwards a little bit, what you just said to me. That's sardonically. It's saying it with attitude, mm -hmm. okay? He says, tell them sardonically, if, they, if people should try to weaken your belief in the Lotus Sutra, so that means that they would be attacking the Lotus Sutra, they would be attacking mm -hmm. Nitra, and they would be attacking Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Mm -hmm. Okay, just consider that this is no big deal, it's no threat to you, but that it's just a matter of, again, the, 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 the devil of the sixth heaven is, is testing you. So go back at those people that try to, to, to sway your faith and, and, and weaken it, and say to them sardonically, which means, again, with attitude, I deeply appreciate your warning. However, you should save your admonishment for yourselves. <laughs> I know well that our Lord does not approve of my faith. The idea of you threatening, of your threatening me in his name is simply absurd. I was contemplating visiting you all and giving you some advice, but you came here before I could follow through. You will surely join your palms together and beseech me for help when you, along with your beloved wife and children, are dragged out before King Yama. Everybody know, knows who King Yama is, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what you say about Niida may well be true. I have also heard about the people of Okitsu. If the occasion arises, you should behave exactly as they did. So what he's saying, when he's saying you should behave as they did, he's qualifying they must have done what he's just suggested, you know, and, 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 and they would not roll back on Nietzsche, right? Mm -hmm. He said, when those of rank reproach you for your faith, okay, so when those of rank reproach you, so now what's he talking about? When those people that are higher than you in society, which you got to worry about their opinion of you, okay? Mm -hmm. They could do things that they have the power and the authority to screw with you. Mm -hmm. He says, when those of rank reproach you, so again, the Daishonin's guidance is very seated in realistic reality. It's very, very solidly like, I already know what you're going to run into, and this is how you deal with it. Mm -hmm. Don't have to even figure it out. When those of rank reproach you for your faith, think of them as worthy adversaries of the Lotus Sutra, not of you personally, or of even me. Because when they're attacking your faith, they're attacking the Lotus Sutra. Right. Yeah. Okay? Consider it an opportunity as rare as the blossoming of the um, um, Udambara plant or a blind turtle encountering a floating sandalwood log and reply to them firmly and resolutely. Now, why is he saying that? He's saying, consider it when they reproach you about your faith. Mm -hmm. He's saying, consider it an opportunity as rare as this blossoming of this plant, which only happens once every a thousand years. <laughs> okay? And, or, or, or a blind turtle encountering a floating sandalwood log with the, just the right space for it to fit inside yeah. it. It's that kind of like unbelievably unexplainable good fortune that you would have something like that happen. Now, what is in this event that is, he's talking about <coughs> that would bring that kind of fortune, that would represent that kind of good fortune? <coughs> when those of rank reproach you, pardon? To encounter such difficulties. Yes, but not only that. It's not, okay. When those of rank reproach you for your faith, think of them as worthy adversaries of the Lotus Sutra. Mm -hmm. consider, it a, a, consider it an opportunity as rare as the block. Okay, what is this opportunity? Considering I what are... Considering the three enemy comes out, the, and the, you are the Buddha to... Exactly. To, to push it but in more, clear, it, more clearly, the opportunity to protect the law. To protect the correct teaching, to behave as a correct teacher, to behave as Nichiren, to behave in the same mind as Nichiren, to get the opportunity to show your faith through action mm -hmm. rather than words or thoughts mm -hmm. is as rare yeah. as that plant blossoming every thousand years. And when it happens, don't go, oh, why me? Yeah. Go like, yeah, me! 
because my faith is what allows me to have the opportunity to encounter that circumstance and triumph and be the example for all others. I am the Buddha in my present form at that moment. Yes. Understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's saying, there have been instances in which those who governed a thousand or ten thousand cho of land, okay, which must be, I don't really know how much land that is, but that's a lot of land, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, there have been people that have owned all kinds of huge estates, had their lives summarily taken and their estates confiscated over trifling matters. Just because a ruler decided, I don't like you anymore. Or, I think you were looking at my wife a little funny. Could be killed for any number of things and lose everything. We saw how much they played with Nanjo Tokimitsu's estates, all the estates, <coughs> anybody that had anything. The rulers were constantly manipulating that as a way to keep in power. Mm -hmm. He says, he says so he said, if you give your life now, for the sake of the Lotus Sutra, with, with life being that fragile in the first place, you, nothing's assured. There's no way you can guarantee yourself of anything in the future because the future is completely always unknown. Okay? So he's saying, what you can know that now, though, is that if you devote your life to the law, you know what you're doing. And that's a res that will have a residual effect for many lifetimes, for all the future lifetimes. Right. So he says, if you give your life now for the sake of the Lotus Sutra, what is there to regret? Bodhisattva Medicine King burned his own body for 1,200 years and became a Buddha. Mm -hmm. King Suzudan made a bed of his own body for his teacher for 1,000 years. As a result, he was reborn as Shakyamuni Buddha. And who was his teacher? Who's, who's King Suzudan? Remember Ajita or Asita when he says Devadatta was my teacher in a past lifetime? He was, that was his identity as the king who Devadatta had been the teacher to. All right? It was reborn as Shakyamuni Buddha. Make no mistake, if you abandon your faith in the Lotus Sutra now, you will only make yourself the laughing stock of your foes. Shamelessly pretending friendship, they will try to maneuver you into recanting with the intention of later laughing at you and letting others ridicule you as well. Let them say what they have to say. Then tell them, instead of advising me in the presence of many people, why don't you admonish yourselves first? With this remark, abruptly arise from your seat and depart. Attitude. Please let me know in a day or two what has happened since you wrote. There are so many things I want to say that I cannot write all of them here. I will do so in my future letters. With my deep respect, Nitra, in the 15th day of the 15th, uh, fifth month of the third year of Kinji, replied to Ueno. Okay, so that was the whole Gosha. And uh, I'm just going to go into the intro, and then I'll stop them as soon as I get to all of these stars. Okay. So I'm going to just read page 102 and 103 from volume four of Teachings for Victory, okay? okay. This was all Gosho stuff that we've already read. Okay, lecture, top of page 102. My mind is always filled with thoughts of young people. When I hear about a young person struggling, I can't sit still. I want to go and help them, to do something, anything I can to support them. The Soka Gakkai's founding president Tanessa Buro Makaguchi also cared deeply about young people. During the labor mo mobilization of civilians in Japan during World War II, many young people from throughout the country were assigned to work in factories in the Tama region west of Tokyo. On several occasions, Mr. Makaguchi visited young members working there, youth who were eagerly seeking and spreading Nichiren Daishonin's teachings. Again, this would have been at the very early stages, right? when Makaguchi was the leader, okay? He gave a number of lectures on Nichiren Buddhism in one of the factory cafeterias under the stern surveillance of the wartime thought police. That was 70 years ago in 1942, the year before Mr. Makaguchi and Mr. Toto were imprisoned by the Japanese militarist authorities. That same year, Mr. Makaguchi also made the long journey to Fukushima in the Tokyo Hoku region to introduce the Daishonin's teachings to the parents 
of a sister and brother who had joined the Soka Gakkai in Tokyo. Now, can you imagine that? He went all that way just to Shakabuku, their mom and dad, to help make it easier for them to be able to practice. Second, in other words, he was going there to really shock a book of the parents, but also to put their minds at ease with the belief set that their, their children their, had, had, had engaged in. Second president, Soka Gakkai president, Jose Toda, more than anyone understood Mr. Makaguchi's spirit to do anything possible for the happiness and development of young people. When the first young men's division general meeting was held in 1953, Mr. Toda gazed with delight at the large number of youth, each burning with a passionate resolve to realize Kozurufu. He said, if my mentor, Mr. Makaguchi, were here today, oh, I know he would be overjoyed. I wish I could have shown him this gathering. It truly moves me to tears. Addressing the assembled youth, he declared, when Shakyamuni awakened to the eternity of life, refuted the teachings of Brahmanism, and founded Buddhism. It was the youth who joined him in his effort to spread his teaching. The ardor and energy of youth have the power to change the course of world history. Fact. This isn't about us old farts. This is about those <laughs> of you that still have a few decades ahead of you. Again, mastering this as early on in your life as you can so that you can help others master it as early on in their lives as they possibly can. It doesn't have to be that everybody has to practice for so long to get it. But the correct teachers have to be there to be able to teach it so that that can actually occur. All right? Going further, he says, second column, page 102. He also said, President Toda, about this. The fundamental philosophy is a philosophy of life. The fundamental philosophy is a philosophy of life. Okay, it's not a philosophy of theory, it's a philosophy of living. Our philosophy is the supreme philosophy guiding all the sciences in the world. The law of cause and effect and the simultaneity of the law of cause and effect. You are world-class leaders, he said to the youth. Don't care who you are, how you went to school. You chen nam yo ho You're devoted to the law in the latter day. You're disciples of the original teacher. You propagate the Buddhism of sowing. You are world-class leaders, President Toda said to those young people in 53. <coughs> It is the unwavering conviction of the SGI, an ever youthful organization, one that keeps you young no matter how old you are, that young people who uphold the supreme philosophy of the mystic law are first-rate world leaders who will pioneer a new age. This accords with the Daishonin's assertion if the law that one embraces is supreme, then the person who embraces it must accordingly be foremost among all others. In this chapter, we will study the work workings of Brahma and Chakra, which is addressed to his youthful follower, Nanjutoki Mitsu. From the Daishonin's example of encouraging and fostering a single youth, we can gain, in, we can gain valuable insights for fostering youth, which is the essential spirit of our youthful SGI. I'm going to go ahead and read the next page, please. Okay. Because I don't want to just stop there. It's, it's too abrupt. Okay. Giving fatherly advice and encouragement to Nanja Tokimitsu. And we'll just be reading this page 103. <clears throat> Going back into the Go Show. I received on the 14th day of the fifth month the horse load of yams that you took the trouble to send me. Considering the labor involved in producing them, yams today are as precious as jewels or medicine. Here, Nichiren expresses his gratitude for the sincere, the sincere spirit of Nanja Tokimitsu and his family in sending offerings to him on Mount Minobu, where the provisions for daily life were always scarce. It was May in the lunar calendar, a period when rice stores were quite low. At this time, the Nanjo's feudal lord had assigned them to engage, to engage in repairs on the local Fuji Shingen Shrine, which was quite a drain on, the, on their labor force and financial resources. 
knowing this and, recognizes that, and recognizing that they had sent these life-sustaining food items <coughs> to their mentor, despite his own straight, uh, uh, straightened circumstances, the Daishonin expresses his appreciation with the words, yams today are as precious as jewels or medicine. When Tokimitsu received this letter in 1277, he was almost 19, an age when he was beginning to shoulder full responsibility as the central pillar of his family and community and as a leader of Kosen Rufu. Nichiren supported and encouraged him in a fatherly manner. Moreover, during the period from around 1275 to 1278, the Daishonin's community of believers was experiencing major growth after his pre prediction of the, a Mongol invasion made in his treatise on establishing the correct teaching for the peace of the land had actually come true in 1274. High-ranking priests of the other Buddhist schools and officials of the military government were, dis were displeased by this development. Through their plotting, persecution of the Daishonin's followers were also intensifying. This was the same period in which the Ikigami brothers had trouble with their father, who twice disowned, disowned his elder son, and Shijo Kingo faced pressure from his feudal lord to renounce his faith in the Lotus Sutra. This was all going on simultaneously between all these guys. In, the Suruga, Pro, in Suruga province, where propagation efforts had been moving forward steadily under the leadership of Nikko Shoni, oppression of Nichiren's local followers was taking place which would later culminate in the Asahara persecution. Tokimitsu was also plagued by, by an unrelenting onslaught of devilish functions that sought to obstruct his Buddhist practice. Aware of this, Nichiren no doubt wrote this letter to teach his young follower the key to winning over obstacles through faith. Okay? And so, understand that... Okay. Not only, okay, Nanjo Tokimitsu is a badass dude, okay? He, he took on so much at such an early age before he could have really understood it with any level of depth or clarity. And he did it completely strictly from the, a, a sense of faith based on his father's mm -hmm. preceding faith, his mother's faith, the lay nun right. sustained her faith throughout <laughs> her life. And having the opportunity to encounter the Daishonin. Don't forget, too, he had, he had his younger brother die ultimately as well. He himself had a lot of trouble with health problems. Okay? So the whole thing here, starting next time, and I'll probably reread this going into it, but this whole lecture is going to be about devilish functions and the fact that they are hand in hand with the correct practice, okay? That they, if you want, wait, are waiting for a point in time where you no longer deal with devilish functions because you have defeated all devilish functions, mm -hmm. that never actually happens, <laughs> and, uh, okay? You've defeated them through the faith and the power of faith that never allows them to defeat you. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But them existing as little things that screw with you or challenge you or force you to continue to grow or to look more deeply into your own faith, they're your best friends in reality because they're the things that force you to continue to manifest Buddhahood. Right. Right? Yes. Right. Period. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into all that. That's really the teaching of this Go Show and where we're headed. And I'm sorry we're going to cut it off here now, but um, see you in two weeks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.